اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم اما بعد ربي زدني علما ربي زدني علما ربي زدني علما we will inshallah be doing this book lisan ul quran language of the quran this book is in three three parts it's volume 1 volume 2 volume 3 Inshallah, slowly we will finish till volume three. It's a long journey, but we will do it little by little at a time. So, Inshallah, the journey will be easy. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will make it easy. Do keep praying, making dua, and then you sit to study any time whenever you sit. I would advise you take out for each day at least ten minutes, or if not, thrice a week. The class Inshallah will be thrice a week. and we will be doing just 15 to 20 minutes in all those three classes not much because initially you will have a lot of concepts to grasp and that will need time so the more if, if we do little by little it is easier to grasp it inshallah uh there will be some exercises in this book for those there is a key to this book key key to volume 1 key to volume 2 and key to volume 3 where all the answers will be there we have already started with the first section You will see these are the chapters, which it's they're pretty short chapters. So we will try to complete one one chapter. I'll go directly to last class. We just went through these the alphabets. One more thing is whatever is written here in Arabic. If you can see here, I will be mentioning these initially. If you don't remember, it is fine. But I will keep saying these so that the more you listen to them, the more you read them, you will remember those Arabic words. Okay, so huruf means alphabet. It's actually plural alphabets. Harf means alphabet. Hurufu tahaji means like A B C D are all single alphabets. Like that, when you have separated single alphabets, they are called hurufu tahaji. So these are the names. This is how the alphabet is written in Arabic, and this is how you read. Like this one, Alifun is read as Alif. Now I am assuming all of you all know the alphabets pretty well, so we will just move ahead. This is already covered in my previous class. General definitions: Tarifatun, Ammatun, Ammatun, Ammatun means general. Tarif means something that is known. So, what are the definitions? Short vowels like Fatha, Kasra, Dama. Then you have the mean, which is nothing but a double, double fatha, double kasra, double bama. This is already covered, so that is why I'm just brushing through. I'm not going into the details. Any doubt, any time you have, you can always message in the group, and I will reply to that soon. Now the alphabets which contain a haraka, like this one. Where has a haraka fatha? The close there has here tanmin dhamma, or here gain has a dhamma. These since they have a haraka, they are called mutaharrik. Mutaharrik, they have a haraka. Ra is sukun, is known as sakin. Okay. Double letters is nothing but the ones which have a tajdid. Or tashdid is the small sign, also known as shadda. And then we are done. Okay, let us begin with chapter one. Adarsul awal, dars lesson awal first. Al kalimatu wa aqsamuha. Kalimatu, sorry, kalimatu means word. Aqsam is the plural of qism. Qism means the types. How many types it has? Aqsam, and ha means its. So al kalimatu and its types, so the word and its classification. Now, what does that mean? In Arabic, if you will look at all the words, suppose you just open any page of the Quran, you're sitting and reading, whatever words you can see on that page, any word, you can always classify it as either of these three categories. It will either be this first category, second category, or third category. Each and every word will fall only into these three categories. This is ismun, fi'lun, harfun. Ism is noun. It's not 
exactly noun in Arabic. In Arabic, it is more than a noun, but we will call it as a noun for general understanding. It means all names, isn't names, names of places, animals, person, things. And also general, like if I want to say a room, orfatun, a room. This is also an ism. Verbs are nothing but those words which have an action in it. Fe'lun, fe'lun is an action. And any action will always be either in the past tense or in the present tense or future tense. So anything that has an action, it was done, it is being done, it will be done. So past, present, future, any word that has a tense, that is a fail. And another is harf. This is the last category, harf. It is particle. In English, you have lots of particles like conjunction, preposition. But here in Arabic, everything will fall as harf. You don't have many different categories. So it's just simple ismun, fe'lun, harfun, just three categories of words. After each lesson, you will see some kind of rules like this. Rule number one. This, this is nothing but a summary of that whole chapter. So whenever you want to revise the chapter, what you can do is you can go through these examples. And also you can look at these rules. Now rule number one, a kalima is a meaningful word. So any word which does not have a meaning is not a kalima. And in Arabic, in the Quran, whichever word is there, it always has a meaning. There is no word without a meaning. Like in English, when you use this, just some sounds. If you just make sounds, they are not meaningful words. And words will be three categories. Ismun, Felun, Harfun. This is noun, verb, and particle. Noun is what? A person, place, animal, thing, names of anything. Even names of things that you cannot see, like feelings or qualities. These words will not have any connection with time, like when, past tense, present tense. There will be no connection with time. But verbs, on the other hand, they will be connected with a time, past tense, something happened, something is happening or something will happen. And particles, they don't have meaning by itself. They will be either connected with a noun or a verb only then will you have some meaning to it. By itself, it does not have any meaning. Like if I just say in, of, by, you will say of what, in what. So they are incomplete without any word after it. Now the first category that we did was this one, ismun. Now this ism itself, it can be of different type. So what are the classifications of this ism? You have three classifications that you need to know at this stage. ismi asthalathatu. These the three classifications of a noun. And let us see what are those. These three categories, what it means is, if you have an ism, any word you see, okay, this is a name of something. So it is an ism. It will have three properties to it. It will either be definite or indefinite. Like if I say book, it will be either a book or the book. Each word in Arabic has a gender, masculine or feminine. Even books, chairs, tables, everything has a gender. And another thing that you know from looking at the ism is, is it one, is it two, or is it many? This again is a little different from English because you have only singular and plural in English. In Arabic, you have a specific word for two, like if it is only two books. Anything which is two in number, so that is another, which is called as dual. You have singular, dual, and plural. Let me read the Arabic word for these. Definite is something that is known. You know it. So it is from Arafa. Arafa means to know. You can see these alphabets, Arafa. So this is Al-Ma'rifatu. Al-Ma'rifatu means known. So it's definite. One nakiratu al maharifatu wa nakiratu These all may be new words. You may not remember. It is fine. But just keep reading these words along with the English. Masculine and feminine. al muzakkaru wal muannathu Muzakkar, masculine. 
please keep your mic off, please. Al-Muzakkar is masculine. wal is feminine. Okay, let's see what's inside. So, Al-Ma'arifatu wa nakiratu Al-Muzakkaru wa Al-Mu'annathu and singular is Mufrad. You can remember from this word Farad al-Fard is one. Fard one. Al-Mufrad wa Al-Muthanna wa Al-Jam'u. Singular, dual, plural. Two in Arabic is Ithnan. Wahid, Ithnan, Thalatha. So, Ithnan is two. So, here you can see Ithna, Thana, this is two. So, Muthanna is two. Jama'a, those who know Hindi may know this word Jama'a, plural. So, Mufradu wal Muthanna wal Jama'u. Now, this chapter two is the next one which I will be covering in the next class, but I will just start it so that next class we can brush it in detail. Any ism, as I said, it can be either definite or indefinite. So, how do you know? Like, how do you identify? And these things are important. You need to know these properties. Whenever you see an ism, you should know all these properties. That is this definite? Is it indefinite? How many are they? Because that's how you will be able to translate the word and that's how you'll be able to translate the whole ayah and understand it. So, initially, these concepts, what is your target? Is just those points. Like, how many types of words? Ism, fil, harf. In ism, what all properties? So you need to learn these in just these small bits. Little, 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 little. At one point, they all are going to add up and add further meaning. You will be able to connect these later. Initially, you just have to do them in these small bits. Only when you know this, you can proceed to the next one. Learning Arabic grammar is like go climbing a ladder. You cannot directly jump to the last level. You have to start from the base, go one one step up, and then you will reach inshallah to the top. So definite and indefinite, let's see. And nakiratu, nakiratu is indefinite. You will see here the order is interchanged. It's mentioned as indefinite and definite. So and nakiratu indefinite, wal ma'arifatu definite. How you will identify is you need to know the signs of how to identify this one, ma'arifatu. How do you know that a word is definite? How do you know that it is ma'arifa? Once you know a ma'arifa, you will just check. If you have a word, you will just check is this ma'arifa or is it not? If you identify it as ma'arifa, then it's ma'arifa. If no, then it's nakira. That's the way that you will do it. Now, a nakiratu is general. It is something that is any, any person, anything, any place. You're not specifying something definite. Like, person, a horse. It's like saying, a and the. Talibun, a student. Madrasatun, a school. Rajulun, a man. Madinatun, a city. Kitabun, a book. One thing, if you notice, all these words have a dhamma. Uh, sorry, dhamma in the sense, tanween dhamma. So it will have, have a tanween. Tanween fatha, tanween kasra, or tanween dhamma. It will have a tanween. So all the indefinite are having a tanween. Now, if you will see the definite, al ma'arifatu, al farasu, it does not mean a horse. It means the horse. So when I say, pass me a book, you can give me any book because I did not mention. I just say, pass me a book. But when I say, pass me the book, then I'm referring to some specific book. Then you cannot give me any book because I'm referring to some book. Maybe it may be the book which is on the table that I'm saying, pass me the book. Any, any it could be, but it would mean something definite which is being mentioned. Something that is known. Al-Kitabu. Now, Khalidun, this is the name of a person. So, it is definitely different because when I say Khalidun, it refers to Khalid. It cannot be any Khalid. 
name of any city like here it is karatishi this is the name of a city so again this is names of certain places names of people those will be definite now if you will see difference between abao and this one like kitabun a book al kitabu the book your tell me to dhamma kitabun and that means a book that the mean at the end is giving the meaning of this a when you want to say the book you will see here on in the beginning alif lam this alif lam is giving you this meaning of the and when this comes it moves the tanveen and it just keeps one dhamma the tanveen will move you will have only one sign instead of the double dhamma you will have single you cannot say al kitabun that will be wrong you can say kitabun or al kitabu same way here farasun al farasu either al or tanween both cannot come together because you cannot say a uh, the book the a uh, book it's incorrect now just a small note here when you translate an indefinite noun you add a and sometimes you will even add a few or some when i say kitabun it's a book or some books or few books but it's general meaning and for definite you will put the now this part i will cover in the next one because it may be too much for definite nouns as i mentioned when you see an ism when you see words you will think to yourself okay this will be an ism or it will be a fail or it will be harf there are some ways of identifying these which we will slowly we will be covering so suppose you have identified okay this is an ism now in that ism if you want to find out if it is definite or indefinite what is what do you have to do you have to check whether it is definite or not you have to just check is it marifa is it definite if it is definite you come to know it's definite if it is not definite then by default you will say okay this is not definite so that means it is indefinite so to identify definite nouns what to do so this is a list of how you will identify if a word ismun is definite or not so inshallah this we will do in the next class which is our on friday any questions you can always ask